and welcome to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel and we're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to start off tonight talking with a nonprofit organization who's been around for a while and doing amazing things in our community. It's the only statewide child abuse prevention organization and foundation that's exclusively committed to the child's well-being. And here to talk with us tonight is Susan Lindauer, the Executive Director of the Children's Trust a trust fund of Oregon. Thanks for being here, Susan. Absolutely. So tell me, um, how long have you been with the Children's Trust Fund? Has that been a while? About three and a half years. Three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And a lot has been going on. I know that yes. I, I get the newsletters and um, you've been making a lot of changes and a lot of progress and kind of the research uh, mm -hmm. behind um, people that are affected by child abuse and how mm -hmm. it affects families. Can you tell me a little bit about the history of your organization Absolutely. and maybe what the mission is? Definitely. And thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. Uh, the Children's Trust Fund was originally a part of state government, and there were funds that were provided through the state and federally uh, for the prevention of child abuse and neglect. In about 1999, 2001, they became a private uh, nonprofit uh, organization because they really wanted to engage the community mm. and engage the public around this issue. And sometimes when you're in state government, there's not that transparency and engagement level. Right, it's mandated by the government and right. people it's, don't have their say in how it should be run. Is that kind of? Yeah, and well, and, and more regulatory. And we really wanted to um, really be much more engaging and do a lot more of uh, development mm. of the programming and flexibility with our funding. So we've been primarily a grant maker, a, a funder of uh, child abuse prevention strategies and programs for the last 20, near, almost 30 years. That's a long time. It is, and, and fortunately we're in communities all over the state um, that really need uh, to be having parent education type of programs, therapeutic uh, uh, programming for children who have suffered abuse and neglect, and um, a variety of different services so that families have what they need to increase their strengths as a parent because often, as we all know, parents do not, you don't come with an owner's <laughs> manual to be a no, good parent. You and you never know what's going to happen that's going to affect your life and, and change the Absolutely. way you parent. Absolutely. And uh, so often, we are um, influenced by our, our own parents. True. And True. so, um, so much of the modeling that we see, we usually pass down to our children. And so, um, you know, there are many times that parents don't get those mm. basics of child development and kind of best practice parenting skills. Right, right. And so we have many programs that we fund that really provide those basics around child development, uh, parent education and supports, and oftentimes um, with parents that are really in crisis um, with a variety of issues, uh, drug and alcohol, mm -hmm. or mental health, or domestic violence, um, we, we make sure that they are connected to programs that really support them to deal with some of those issues. And this is throughout the entire state, so yes. the rural areas as well as the Absolutely. urban areas. And we try to make sure we're in every county. Okay, well that's a, that's a good thing. I know mm -hmm. that, um, I mean, because obviously child abuse and, and neglect is uh, it's a worldwide problem. Absolutely. So, and unfortunately in Oregon, um, nearly 12 out of every 1,000 children are affected by wow. abuse and neglect. And in some of our more rural areas, that can be as high as 24 out of every oh, wow. 1,000. So it's higher, it tends to be higher in the rural areas? Is that it's, what you found in your? Yes, studies? per uh, capita, mm -hmm. it, it unfortunately is in higher areas, um, and higher in rural areas. And um, I mean, overall, the, rate, the total number is around 10,000 children. And unfortunately, those are the children that are, that are being reported. And there's a whole bunch that aren't. Yeah, there's a I'm lot sure that are true. not, yeah. and you know, the child welfare, child protective services only has so much capacity. Right, right. To, so, what constitutes to child abuse? How is that? How is that um, how defined? You defined. Yeah, yeah that's the word I was looking for. Yes. Yeah, um, physical um, uh, abuse, uh, sexual abuse, any kind of potential threat of harm. Okay. Um, to the child's safety and well-being. Mm -hmm. um, neglect is actually, interestingly enough, one of the largest parts of uh, abuse and neglect uh, okay. as, a, as a kind of a category. And that's you know anything that puts the uh, child's well-being at risk. Um, so if that's physical or mental or um, 
you know, they're not being protected with, you know, uh, how, safe housing. So perhaps or they're living in, a, in a, an environment where people are using drugs or where there is domestic right. violence, even if it isn't directed at them, that That's would right. be a neglectful or, or just, or, a, or where the children are left alone when... Right, unsupervised. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So um, you, you, you grant, you... Uh, provide grants for yes. different organizations. Yes. So what, we have who are some of the partners that you work with? Who are some of the organizations? So in the in the Portland area, um, we we fund uh, relief nurseries that like really children's relief the nursery Portland Children's Relief one. Nursery. There's also the Relief Nursery at Volunteers of America. Oh, okay. And oh. Um, and so uh, those are very kind of comprehensive, more intensive services. Like I was saying before, you know, there's some programs that we fund that are really parent education classes. Mm -hmm. Um, but there's other programs that provide a real continuum of supports from everything from parenting education uh, to mental health services or referrals mm -hmm. for drug and alcohol services. So getting um, at the source of some of the things that maybe were the cause or the, the root problem. Absolutely. I mean, we are absolutely dedicated to uh, getting to those root issues. Yeah so that the, the, the abuse and neglect does not continue. Right, Cause, and it, like you said, a lot of times that's, it's a family thing, it's a, you know, there's it's a cycle. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's really hard to break that. I think if you haven't seen, I mean, I, I happen to have wonderful parents and my parents mm -hmm. were, you know, I had a wonderful childhood mm -hmm. and, and I thank God for that, but I know plenty of people who didn't, weren't so lucky. Exactly. And if you don't, if you're not, <laughs> you're not seeing that model for you, it would be really difficult to know how to deal with certain situations. And at the same time, if there's a lot of family stressors that are going mm -hmm. on, that really creates an environment that, that may not be safe for the child. So you're talking about things like people losing their jobs, um, exactly. and homelessness. Financial stress is unfortunately one of the biggest issues mm -hmm. um, with abuse and neglect. If, you, you're, if you're not able to provide for your family financially, you can imagine what kind of stress that would bring. Right. Well, and you don't have enough to eat, either you exactly, or your children. And that, exactly, and it leads yeah. to a variety of other real yeah. major issues. Yeah, and if you throw in there some uh, substance abuse issues yes. and maybe some mental health, mental issues, health issues, issues, yeah. I you can see, see and, and actually, um, and I know we're gonna talk about our, the report that we just mm -hmm. did, but what, what really predicts abuse and neglect is the accumulation of multiple mm. risk factors. So what you were talking about, you know, if you've got poverty and then you're overlaying that with uh, mental health issues or right. substance abuse and neglect, uh, substance abuse use and um, or domestic violence, right. that kind of environment is extremely unsafe and very at very high risk for children. So the the grants you provide, they um, they do provide services, but then you also do some research too, is that right? Yeah, and so and I wanted to talk a little bit about that. So when we um, so for the most part, the, the last 30 years or so, we have been doing grant making and mm -hmm. we've been funding a variety of different programs throughout the state. Um, and we have a two year funding cycle. It actually is coming up uh, in April. We'll help be receiving applications again for that okay. cycle. Okay. Um, and all that information is on our website for anyone who's interested. Good. And, uh, but we really, we really, the board has really said, we really want to learn more about abuse and neglect in the state. We'd like to do a lot more research. Well, and having that research helps you make the decisions on which for us to. That's exactly yeah, yeah. why. And so they yeah. really want to be much more informed and strategically yeah. informed. Yeah. And so we've been really lucky to work with Portland State's, uh, State University, the Center for the Study of, the city, uh, I'm sorry, the Center for the Study of, uh, the Center for the Improvement of Family and Child Studies. Sorry. <laughs> it's a long one. That is, that's a mouthful. <laughs> yes, it is. And um, we started out doing a um, report with them identifying the uh, evidence-based programs throughout the state mm -hmm. and uh, that really led to uh, prevention of abuse and neglect. And um, we identified that there were 12 because we really wanted to get our hands around, you know, what were what were kind of the programs that were available for families mm -hmm. that have a level of evidence that have been tested and, and that we know exactly. And, mm -hmm. and so um, we, we worked with Portland State University to identify 12 programs that are currently mm -hmm. being implemented okay. uh, in, in specifically in Oregon. And that was kind of our first step at saying, you know, these are the programs that we know are getting results for families. And are these ones you'd already provided grants to or, or not? Yes, or many of which we did, okay. and there were there were a few that we had not. Okay. And there were some that were being that are currently being funded by the state. Okay. Um, so it was a real kind of a combination. So the state is still involved in all this too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, they're a key partner. And so, but we wanted to say to policymakers and other funders, 
you know, these really are what we believe are, you know, proven successful programs. And, you know, we want to make sure that we're all kind of funding those. Um, so that was the first step. And then we decided we really want to look at, you know, where, where is there significant prevalence of abuse and neglect right. in the state? And, um, and we also wanted to find out what are the risk factors that, um, that make an environment high risk for children. Right. And then we also wanted to, on top of that, we wanted to find out where are these programs that we just, you know, with these 12 programs that we know have evidence, where are they currently being implemented and how do they connect to um, the prevalence and those risk factors? So are they being administered in the areas that most need it? Right. That, and so that's what we were trying to find yeah. out. And where are those gaps? That so we're, were you able to find out that? Yes. Was, it sounds like a pretty it was comprehensive a, report. It was a, it's a huge report, um, also on our website. Oh, good. Okay. And there's actually a chart um, that oh, I, okay. I think that you have yeah, that kind of outlines. That um, looking, It looks at, there it is. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so you can see it's, it's a little complicated, um, and there's a little bit more detail below the chart that kind of describes. Which is on your website. Yes, which <laughs> is on the website. Okay. Um, that describes the uh, kind of the levels of risk factors per county. So this is all county based. Mm -hmm. So the levels of risk factors, um, the prevalence, you know, so how, and the, the, so the dots really represent the, the, the kind of the level of prevalence. So the bigger of, dots is where there's a lot more evidence. Or, of, of abuse, abuse, abuse and neglect. Right, okay. And then the, um, uh, and I'm sorry, the, the darkened areas are, mm -hmm. are you know, where they're shaded, mm -hmm. you can kind of tell, you know, that there's... So the, the darker the areas, the... The what? higher the prevalence. Oh, okay. okay. And then, I'm sorry, so the dots represent the risk factors. Oh. And uh, where you see kind of the larger dots, the more risk factors there are. So what were the top risk factors? The top risk, <laughs> the top risk factors were what we were kind of talking uh, yeah. before about Some poverty. of those, but which ones were the, yeah, yeah. Which ones were the top? So the poverty, mm -hmm. um, mental health issues, uh, domestic violence, um, uh, drug and alcohol, substance abuse. Yeah, so the, um, those things are the ones that yes, are going to yeah. be the worst. So it's, um, w you know, when you're looking at all of those, and like I said, it's really accumulative, uh -huh. is really when you start to see the higher rates of abuse and neglect. And then we also wanted to show, okay, so with these programs, um, you know, what we wanted to know is, are you know, with the programs, with the, the counties that have the higher abuse of, um, uh, abuse and neglect, higher rates of abuse and neglect, and the higher risk factors. Mm -hmm. How are the programs coming in to kind of support yeah. the, those issues I and address those? I wonder about the, the rural areas. You know, I mean, you know in the exactly. Portland area, we have a lot of exactly. services, but if you're out in southeastern Oregon, you're, there's not a lot out there, period. Right. <laughs> Let and, alone. And that chart services. really yeah. shows yeah. those darkened areas uh, where it's the worst really are in southern yeah. Oregon, um, you know, really the southern part of the state. Mm -hmm. And right, then on the eastern part, and then the, unfortunately on the on the coast, and it's hmm. exactly right. So what we found is that many uh, there just weren't the the level of program reach uh, oh. in those areas. Which could also contribute to, to the reasons why they have higher levels because That's they exactly don't have it. the services available. Yeah, there's definitely a causal yeah. effect there. Yeah. Interesting. So um, you know, we really wanted to make sure that okay this is you know we wanted to get this information mm -hmm. so that we can make those strategic decisions right. and not only um, not only internally mm -hmm. to within our board and our grant making decisions but we think it's really important to provide this information to policymakers mm -hmm. especially in sure. those counties as well as other uh, foundations that are interested in funding this area so do you do work um, with uh, policy making do you, do you do that or are you just are so you a con con consultant or how does that work? So that uh, I would say you know we're you know we're, we're trying to uh, get into this realm of uh, well our, our three kind of focal areas now going forward. So grant making has always been traditionally right. a part of what the trust fund does, um, and then going forward, really our three um, kind of real core areas for us will be continued research mm -hmm. because we want to really learn more and more about how we can make the best use of our resources. Good. <laughs> and, 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 and both you know, within the Children's Trust Fund, but also we want that information for our policymakers. Well, sure, and other nonprofits who are in the same work. Absolutely. It's good for them to know too, I'm Absolutely. sure. Absolutely, yes, yeah. and foundations too. Yeah. 
And then, you know, we also see that information as being really critical f uh, for policy development and other and advocacy. Uh, because I think, you know, with doing kind of collective impact, um, we can really uh, be so much more, we can make so much more of a difference mm -hmm. for communities yeah. when we're kind of sharing this, you know, common body of, of uh, knowledge sure. and expertise. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I'm a firm believer in that, that we need to work together with the other organizations. Yes. We, we're not working against each other. We have to work together. Otherwise, Absolutely. what's the point? You're just... Uh, and, and sharing this information yeah, and, and really yeah. making strategic investments versus yeah. sort of being, you know, only a responsive grant maker, which is what we've kind of been in the past. All right. Yeah. So, so how are you funded? Where, how do you, how do you get the money to give these grants? How does that come about if it's so, not the government? Yes, and I and so I want to mention a couple things. Um, when we did separate from the state, state of Oregon, uh, we did have a small endowment, okay. and we've been able to preserve that endowment Good. over the, you know, twenty five plus. There. Yes, <laughs> yes, thankfully. Good. Um, so we're very lucky that most of those, uh, the endowment we have, kind of a 5% withdrawal that supports our administrative expenses. Good, so good. that anything that we fundraise can be um, devoted to our grant making activity and investments. That makes it a lot easier to raise that money too because, I mean, because it's hard to raise money. It's hard oh, to do it fundraising, is. but You're people not are going to be yes. a lot more willing to give their money if they know it's going directly to the to, to the, the programs, services. yes. Yeah. yes. So do you have events and things like that? To, yes, to help so we have a Partners in Prevention event, which is actually going to be held in April, April 22nd okay. of uh, so 2015. Away, but it'll come fast. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's really a time, we're, we're probably going to be presenting the findings of the report. We'll have some researchers there. We'd love, um, we'd love to have a statewide presence there because we think so much of what um, this information and research is telling us has huge impact for all of our uh, uh, statewide work in terms of the other state agencies sure. and public health, child welfare, and our educational systems. Because so much of this work is critical for a child's sort of lifelong success. Mm -hmm. So we're not yeah. just looking at, you know, how can we support these parents? I mean, that's obviously a huge factor with most of our programs, but we're really wanting to ensure that the, you know, the child is successful both you know, health and educational and, and further uh, future workforce uh, productivity. Yeah, if, if they have been a victim of some sort of abuse, then you have to yes. deal with that. Otherwise, it's going to be a long, a lifelong factor. And then there's right. that cycle thing, too. So, and yeah, unfortunately, if we don't interrupt those kind of cycles yeah. of abuse and neglect, they continue. Yeah. And so we want to do everything we can and really make prevention a priority right. um, within the state and make sure that we're, we're really investing in these real early um, preventative uh, strategies and programs. Good. So the, the event that you have in April, um, mm -hmm. who goes to that? Is that open to the public or is it by invitation? Is that? It's yeah. both. It's we, both. It, we really, um, we like to have all of our partners to come in. So um, different, um, different foundations and nonprofits and right. people that are doing and policy makers. And policy, anybody that's kind of involved in that field. Well, and, and, um, and it really is the public. I mean, yeah. uh, and we have a lot of corporate partners that are very supportive of our efforts. Um, you know, the universities that have yeah, been supported. Even just teachers and, and, Absolutely. and uh, medical workers, you know, people that yes. work with kids. And then our grantees and, um, uh, and, uh, and other kind of statewide uh, stakeholders right. that are really committed to this work. Good. We're just about out of time. So okay. what... what what last thing can you tell us that we should know about the Children's Trust Fund of Oregon, Susan? Well, there's a couple things. We have a real commitment to reducing child abuse and neglect by 40% wow. in 2020. And okay. we know that we can't do that alone. We have to, thus the Partners in Prevention right. luncheon, um, we have to bring everyone together to really make this an issue and really make this a priority in our state. Because we, we spend so much of our um, resources around trying to repair kids and families. Fix the damage. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and sometimes that's effective and other times we see, you know, there's juvenile justice issues or youth mm -hmm. homeless issues or um, a variety of other health care issues that really are lifelong. Yeah, yeah. And so if we can, what we can do to really get in front of that and, do, and really focus on the prevention is, is critical. Um, and I would say, you know, we also are one of, I, one of the things I didn't mention is that we're one of the um, charitable tax checkoff uh, oh, recipients. Good. Oh, good. And so, so you do your taxes? You absolutely. Can, okay, that's right. Yes. That's right. I do remember that. So um, if people have questions and want to find out more, then go to your website. Get absolutely. a lot of information there. Yep. Um, and I'm sure there's contact information there so they can get a hold of you or, or yes. someone on your staff.
Yes. Right. Thanks very much for being Absolutely. part of Absolutely, thank community you. Hotline tonight. You bet. Thanks for watching this first segment of Community Hotline. I hope you've learned something about the Children's Trust Fund of Oregon. It's obvious they're doing things that are very important in our community to help our children and the future of, of our community. So don't go away. We'll be right back with more of Community Hotline. <music> What local community media is to us is literally our lifeline to what's going on in the lives around us. The absolute most important thing that happens in your neighborhood. People's local communities are usually what's most important to them. Because we're the faces, the smiles, the peoples, and the personalities of the community. To not only give people a voice, but to have their voice heard. Local government is a very important part of our daily lives. You might think the decisions that affect us most are made in Washington, D.C., but frequently what happens at the local level has the biggest impact. Safe and clean streets and parks, local ballot measures to ensure funding for police, these are just a few of the issues that matter most. At Metro East, we provide gavel-to-gavel -gavel coverage of local government so you can see what's happening in your East County cities. Watch city councils, planning commissions, and school boards on these cable channels or online.